I'm Kynan Pearson, the lead multiplayer level designer here at 343 Industries. And I'm Lori Zawada. I'm from Certain Affinity in Austin, Texas. We co-developed Forge with 343. All right, so now we're taking a look at Impact and uh, some of the Forge options that you can do uh, and a lot of the new features that Forge has. Impact is one of the three multiplayer maps that, or I'm sorry, three Forge maps that we are going to offer for Halo 4. Whenever you're working in Forge, you have a bunch of different options for object types that you can use. Um, in each of our maps, of our Forge maps, we have a specific palette for that map that has some unique and custom pieces that you'll only find in that version. Uh, you can see that now we have the new labeling and highlighting, so it tells you what object you're looking at and it highlights it green so that you know whenever you press the button you will grab that object. Um, you can also do things like quick delete, and then you can see how whenever you drop a piece and then you drop out of forge mode or out of monitor mode, that it generates light maps and puts shadows on the piece, uh, which is new to forge. One of the big pushes we had for forge was to make sure that the visual fidelity was as close as possible to a single player or multiplayer map. Uh, we want Forge artists to create beautiful maps, not only fun ones, but easily have things like the shadows. You basically accidentally create a, a pretty map without trying. All right, so another one of the unique things that you can do now is um, duplicate object. So if you have an object highlighted and you press down on the D-pad, you'll actually duplicate it. And then uh, this allows you to kind of rapidly uh, reuse pieces without having to go back into the menu and select them. In addition, we have magnets. And so magnets help you by allowing you to grab pieces and align them to other pieces. So if you look, you can see there's these little glowing um, dots on the end caps. Those are the magnet snap points that allow you to use a piece, duplicate it, and then just immediately snap it in location without having to go into the nudge tools. So this will allow, you know, uh, Power Forge users and just Forge users in general uh, easier ways of constructing their levels and, and basically putting together things with rapid iteration. Yeah, and magnets are actually on almost all the Forge pieces. So we have an example here is for these hallways, but they're on ramps, they're in entrances. There's certain forge buildings where we anticipated people might snap things to them, whether it's on the roof, windows. A lot of familiar pieces uh, to the forge palette that was used in Forge World, although everything has been redone. This map uses a UNSC palette, uh, which is also another unique to Halo 4 forge feature. The new ordnance system gives you access to dropping ordnance. Uh, you have initial drops, which is something that comes down at the very start of a map. Uh, random drops, which will randomize what ordinance shows up, and then objective drops, so whenever you accomplish certain goals, you can have those come in. Actually, in the gadgets palette, if we open that up really quick, we have some new features. Uh, we still have the man cannons. We have something new called gravity zones, if you want to go over those. Yeah, so the gravity volumes, these allow you to, to change the kind of traits of what happens whenever you enter them. This not only affects the player character, but it will affect uh, weapon or vehicles as well. Yeah. So as you can see, when I'm within this volume, I have low gravity settings. And all of this stuff is customizable and tunable so that uh, players can set up, you know, specific things where, you know, you have a bunch of different railways or structures. And then in certain areas only, you'll be able to have, you know, low grav or reverse grav or just anything that you want to do. So there's plenty of creative things that you can do with the, the specific traits of the gravity volume. You can actually stack a couple of these gravity volumes together and it compounds itself. Uh, in addition to this, you also have the choice to either have something visible in the game or they could actually be invisible. So this could be like little surprises for people, but the possibilities of this is pretty nuts. Okay, one of the other unique things that we have going on uh, with Forge is that if you have something that's a base piece that you've located and you know exactly where you want it to go, 
You can basically lock that piece in place so that now if I'm pressing the A button, I can't grab it, I can't edit it uh, unless I choose to unlock it by again pressing left on the D-pad. Um, the good thing for this is that you can kind of place your foundation pieces and build off of it and you don't no longer have to worry about accidentally grabbing a piece and nudging it uh, while you're doing your construction. This gets super, super useful when you're working with 300, 400, 500 forge pieces in a single scene and you don't want to accidentally move something that you've spent some time getting just right. In a combination of this, there's also the delete features. Yep. So uh, one of the other things that you can do is you can grab an object or you can just um, go in and you can do delete by palette. So you can uh, delete all of this, these specific objects or you can delete by palette and choose objects within the menu that you want to make sure that you've deleted and you don't have them. Uh, but in addition, if you'd like to start over from scratch, you can just delete everything. And this will allow you to delete all of the objects in your scene and again, start from scratch if you want to just clear it out and do your new unique construction. And if you want to use this in combination with the lock feature, the delete all will not delete objects that are locked. And the hope here is with all these tools now, uh, people will start iterating much quicker, come up with some excellent ideas that they normally would have been maybe a little too hesitant to try before. Uh, and then from there, just things no one's ever expected will probably come out of Forge. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of the um, pre-built spaces that we have on the disc so that players can have something to start with. We're taking a look at Relay. This is uh, one of the map variants, one of the Forge variants that we built using the custom Forge pieces uh, on impact. Uh, this shows you kind of how you can put together uh, a complete map without using any of the terrain, just using all of the forge pieces. You can see that this is a symmetrical 4v4 map. It's uh, objective based, so all of the different objectives are all set up on here. Um, and it gives you a bit of an understanding of how much you can do with forge and, and um, using the unique UNSC palette, kind of how different this looks from the Forge World Halo Reach palette. All right, now we're gonna show a little bit of the um, player trade zones and kind of some of the stuff that you can do with those. So I'm gonna build a few little structures here just so that we have something as a groundwork to work with. You can place a trait zone. Um, you can, you know, scale it to whatever you want. Um, and you can also, you know, increase its height so that it fills whatever volume. Once you have it set up how you like, um, then you can actually go into the trait zone properties. Your trade zone properties will give you a bunch of different options. So you can set shields and health. Um, you can basically make sure you can boost somebody to have, you know, 300% damage resistance in or shield multiplier. You can change their shield recharge rates, um, give them headshot immunity, just whatever um, ideas you have for the game type or the specific trade zone uh, you could do. But you can also do things to adjust player movement so you can, you know, adjust your gravity to lower that your jump height can be significantly increased when you're in you can you know boost your player speed you can see here that you could either adjust one trait or you could just adjust any combination of those traits there's four different buckets and a total of 16 of them in a forge map so four different buckets but 16 of these little circles throughout the map these trait zones will appear invisible in the game you have options also to disable your weapons um, to add infinite energy to your weapons, to be invisible, and... And again, so you have all these options to be able to customize these in any way uh, you would need to work through the stuff that you have that's defined. So again, using the various large structures and uh, our construction pieces, you can see how you can put together something fairly quickly just using some of the, the predefined stuff and magnets. Um, but this, in combination with some of the player trade zones as well, uh, lets you do some some unique things. So for instance, you know, I've got this thing and you can see clearly that my jump height isn't big enough to get up there, but I'd like to allow that in this map. So you can go in. Yeah, so I mean, this is a lot of stuff that you can just mess with for um, as long as you want. There we go. Oh. Still a bad jump. 
right. bam. So again, when you enter this, you'll see that, you know, based on your gravity settings, you know, that stuff is different, but um, yeah, it's just some of the cool stuff that you can do with the player trait zones and the forge pilot.